Hi everyone, today we're going to take a look at this heated shower head from a brand called Lorenzetti. Now I believe this is made in Brazil. They claim it's made in Brazil and is a well-known Brazilian company. Now another name that these go by is a suicide shower. Um, mainly because of the wiring that you see around the world. Some of the wiring is absolutely awful. What I do is I cut in some pictures now and you'll be able to see. So you can see many people don't connect the ground wire. They've just got tape wrapped around the wires or they're just bare wires or the electrics are open. So they've got a pretty bad reputation around the world. But if installed properly, they can be somewhat safe. Now I say somewhat safe because when you learn how these things work, you might be a little bit scared. So I'm gonna open this up and actually show you how it works. I'm also gonna show you the installation and see this in action. So before I open this up, let me just show you. This is the company I bought it from, Dale Star, and this was around a thousand pesos, which is 20 US dollars or around 15 pounds. So it's really, really, really cheap. So I have opened it up, that's why this top is coming off. But if you look at it, you can see the water goes in here. You've got your live AC here and your ground wire here. And if you look inside underneath this cap, you can see where the wires go in and then they're spot welded in place. Now what they should have done instead is just put terminal blocks here so that you can feed in your own wire and then feed it into the terminal block and screw it down because that would cut out all of this mess where people are wrapping wires around and then using bits of tape and stuff like that. It would solve the problem so I don't know why they've spot welded these short tiny little wires on instead of just putting terminal blocks in there. But anyway let's continue to open this thing up. So here you can see the ground wire. Now you can also see it here. So what's happening is the ground is coming in and then it's going through here and this is where you feed in your water. So the water is immediately making contact with ground, which is <laughs> very important for safety. And then when the water exits, it's also making contact with ground. Now, how well that works, I can't say, but that's the idea behind it. Now, if we bend this wire out of the way, we can take this out of place. And then here you can see the heating elements. And now you know why this thing is so cheap because that's all it is. This like contact system up here, which is a little bit questionable and then the heating elements here there are two heating elements because you can switch between them whether you want it on full strength or just half strength so how does it actually work well the water comes in here and it fills this cavity which then pushes on this diaphragm inside this one here and then when that pushes up look at the contacts you see how they make contact so that's all that's happening and that's why it will only be powered when there's water inside because it needs water to push this diaphragm and then make the switches make contact and actually pass power. And when you use this switch to choose if you want full power or half power, all it's doing is putting a piece of plastic between the contacts so that when the diaphragm pushes up, it can't make contact and therefore you've only got like half of the heating element turned on. Now you might be thinking, isn't that like insanely dangerous? We've got water coming in and making contact with live AC and then I'm gonna shower in that water? Well, that's why you've got the ground wire. The idea is that you won't get electric shocks because the ground is gonna take that for you. But many, many people are not bothering to wire in the ground. And that's why a lot of people who use these feel like a tingling sensation. Now, tap water or water out of the faucet isn't very electrically conductive. So that's why even people who haven't connected the ground wire and then they shower in it, they generally just get like a tingle. They're not getting a really harsh shock. And you can see that in other water heaters as well, those little like round ones that you put in a bucket of water. If you put your hand in there, you'll feel a tingle, but you don't get electrocuted. You don't get a major electric shock because the water is not that conductive. Now, I'm not saying that you know, it's not an ideal situation. You shouldn't be getting a tingle from, you know, the AC. It's not an ideal situation. So the ground is so, so, so important. So before I put this thing back together, let me give you a close up again of the contacts. You can see this is the switch. It's really not a great switch, but I guess it kind of gets the job done. Here you can see the wires are spot welded on. And then here where the water comes in, you can see the grounded wire. You see that going through there? And again here, it's one constant wire, but they've stripped back some of the wire to expose the actual metal. And this bit here just screws on, and you can see there's a seal here to make sure it doesn't leak. And you also notice that it has this little bit here which can pop out. Oops, wow, that's incredibly tight, there we go. So the reason for this is that if for some reason this gets blocked and the water's building up, building up, building up, this will blow out and it will allow the water to escape instead of the pressure building up and this whole thing, I don't know, blowing itself up. Um, that's unlikely, but yeah, that's what it is. It's like a blow off valve. Now also in the kit, you get this little tubing here and this bit. Now, aside from being a blow off tube, you can also use this as a separate like 
I don't know, heated water exit. So you could use that on like your private bits. But from what I've seen, no one's really using these. Most people are just using it as a standard blow off valve and nothing else, but they do include that. You can also actually use this for the electrical wiring, although it's too slim in my case because I'm using a much thicker wire. Now next, I said I'm gonna show you the installation and use of this. Now let me say, if you buy one of these, only get it installed by a qualified electrician and please, 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 please make sure they ground it. If they don't ground it, fire them and get someone else. Now here in the Philippines, that's a bit of an issue because many homes don't have any ground. Um, luckily for me, my AC socket does have ground and that's what we're gonna be using today because I'm not doing a permanent installation. All I'm gonna do is demo this for you and that's it. So I'm gonna be connecting it to an AC socket and for that, I made this heavy duty cable. And you'll notice it's a bit weird looking. Well, trying to find a free core wire, one that already has a ground built in in the Philippines, yeah, good luck with that. I'm sure you can get it somewhere, but I couldn't find it in any of the hardware shops. So I actually just added it myself. I've taped it all the way along. Um, this is a heavy gauge wire. You can see that <laughs> this is really heavy duty. It's not very long, it's only four meters. So I didn't have to go like ultra, ultra heavy duty, um, but it is still pretty heavy duty. And you can see it got this heavy duty plug on the end and this can go straight into the AC socket. Now the nice thing about that is it's already a 20 amp circuit and it's already grounded so it's more than suitable for this. Now I'm not saying that you should replicate this because there are safety concerns and electrical like codes and all that kind of stuff that you have to do to be legal. This is just showing you a temporary, temporary review and that's why I've made this cable. Now the funny thing is that this cable here cost nearly as much as the whole shower unit because this is heavy duty cable and this plug itself was like quite expensive. So yeah, this costs almost as much as the shower unit that we're gonna be installing. And I also went to a small local hardware shop and I bought one foot of PVC tubing and then these two little connectors so that I can remove my old shower head and just screw this one in place along with this. Like I said, this is only a temporary installation. And these were really cheap. Like I got some Teflon tape, one foot of pipe and these two connectors for 50 50 pesos, which I think is like under one pound and under, I don't know, like a dollar or so. So cheap, basically. Oh, and something I nearly forgot is that on the water input, there's actually this little piece of plastic, and this is to reduce the flow. Now, if you live in a low flow home, like you've got low water pressure, you might have to remove this, um, but I've got pretty high pressure, so I think I'm gonna leave it in. So this is how it looks with the plumbing. I did actually cut this pipe a little bit shorter because I don't want it coming out so far from the wall. Pretty basic, but this is ready to screw into the wall once we've done the wiring. So here's the final wiring. You can see I've just used connection blocks to join the wires together because this is only a demonstration. Now I am still gonna put electrical tape around them just to make it a little bit safer. But yeah, this is only a temporary connection. Okay, so here we are in the shower. Let's remove the old one. Oops, got a little bit wet there. So out comes the old one. You can see it's a very simple fixture. I don't have a hot water system or anything like that. So let's screw in the new one. So here you can see I've wrapped some tape around the connection blocks like I discussed. And I've also just put some tape around here to provide strain relief. And next thing to do is just screw this little adapter into the wall and then push fit this into place. And there we go. It's ready to test, but before you connect it for the first time, they recommend you run water for it. So let's try that first. Okay, so that actually took a while before the water starts coming out, I guess because it has to fill the cavity inside. But we're ready, are you nervous? I'm nervous. Let's plug it in at the AC socket. So here's the AC socket. Let's hope nothing goes bang. It shouldn't do, but who knows? Okay, nothing went bang, that's good. Now let's turn on the water and see if it gets warm. And you know what? It's coming out warm. Or well, not just warm, it's actually coming out hot. And that's a good flow of water. It works better than I expected. The people who I've seen on YouTube say that it doesn't get very hot. Well, this is getting hot. And no shocks, which is good. Oh, that's too hot. I'm gonna have to turn up the flow. That's impressive. Let me get my thermal camera. Can you see that? The stream of hot water coming down. Now, the temperature itself, don't expect that to be accurate because it's not gonna be able to measure like accurately the temperature of these water droplets. But you can see that it's a, you know, it's a pretty warm stream coming down. See that? I'm amazed at how well this thing works. I can't believe it. 
Wow, that's nice. That's nice, a hot shower. And nothing's going bang, which is really good. What I want to try next is to see if we can use my power meter to measure how much power this thing is using. Now, according to this, this can handle 15 amps, so it should be okay, but let's see. Okay, so it's beeping and flashing, but it's reading 3,000, 3,490 or 3,500 watts. And the packaging says it's rated for around 3,200 watts. So I've now set it to the lower temperature. Let's try measure again. Okay, so on the lower setting, we're reading around 2,300 watts. Let me go fill the water and see how it feels. Yeah, you can definitely tell the difference. The first one is like really hot, really, really, really good. This one is like, it's warm. It's so much better than the cold shower, but it's only warm. So definitely you can tell the difference between the two settings. So on the low setting, it's drawing around 9.6 amp, which makes sense because if you do 9.6 times 220-ish, you're gonna get somewhere close to the watts that we read earlier, 2,250. So let me put it back on the high setting and then check the amps. And on the high setting, we're reading 15 amps or 15.1. That's probably why this thing's flashing and telling me to stop because that's like the limit of what this is meant to be able to handle. Now next I want to see what happens if I plug in an RCD or a GFCI. This is the one that trips if you're going to get an electric shock. Now this is only rated for 13 amp, so I'm going to run the heater on its half setting so we don't overload it. So that's interesting. I've got the water running and I felt the water, you can see my hands are wet, it is warm and the RCD hasn't tripped. So it is compatible with an RCD or a GFCI and of course you should use one because that's going to add an extra layer of safety. So there you go, that's the Lorenzetti heated shower head. Um, it's pretty incredible actually. Yes, some people call it a suicide shower, but that's mostly due to like the really 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 bad wiring that you see around the world like they don't bother connecting the ground they've just got wires like hanging in the air with a little bit of tape around them so i can understand why it's got the nickname suicide shower and if you don't have that ground wire there's a good chance you're going to feel like a, a tingle sensation like a electric shock kind of sensation but minimal um, but then if you actually touch any of the metal parts and that's when you could really be in like big danger um, so would i recommend it i think no, I'd probably still recommend the standard like box shower um, because they're not that much more expensive and they have extra safety built in. Um, there's just something about like live AC and water mixing together that doesn't feel right to me, even if it is grounded. Um, definitely a very, very interesting item to review. I've wanted to review this for such a long time. Um, this isn't sponsored by the way. I will put the contact details down below of the person that I bought this from, the company, um, but I'm not affiliated with them or anything like that. I bought this just like any other customer. Uh, I saw it on YouTube and I really wanted to try it out. So if you have any questions, put them in the comment section down below. And if you enjoyed this video, please give a thumbs up and subscribe. Thanks for watching.